This gospel has been flushed out by the theologians of the centuries. As early as St. Augustine, the question was a problem, and it continued to be so, and indeed it is still so, for many who think of the problem. The problem of the proportion of those to be saved. I have here with me something which I happen to notice in the sacristy as I was resting. You may just notice the particularity about this crucifix. Can you see where the arms are? Now, this is the type of crucifix that came from the Jansenist heresy or influence. And it was, in the extreme forms of this crucifix, almost perpendicular, the thrust of the arms, indicating, it would seem, that the redemption was for the few. Indeed, the language used in the Gospel itself, <coughs> on all the one occasion, is that the Son of Man will give his life as a ransom for many. And you would have noticed over the last few years that the word many has come back to our Eucharist because the Vatican asked that the exact translation be restored given the importance of the words of institution. This is my <coughs> body, and then this is the chalice of my blood, and so on which will be shared for you and for many. Whereas we have gone into all. Actually, the word many is what is in the scriptures. It is something that translates the Hebrew, which the Lord will be using, presumably, of the Aramaic, Rabin. And it is the notion of a great multitude, but that is what it says. So, to hear Sunday after Sunday, day after day, the word all is actually damaging to our thought pattern. You see why? It leads to the heresy of universalism, that it's automatic entrance. That is a heresy. So let's just be aware that it's not automatic entrance, and this gospel warns us about it. We have to be careful that we don't presume. It's like this, my friends. If today, on the way back, we don't actually wake up where we think we're going to, we will suddenly find ourselves unprepared, e.g. in a road accident. Now, let's be honest. Are we ready? Is there unfinished business? When will we last in confession? Well, let's just hope that we're at least in a state of grace, and that the most we have to sort out is grime. But what are the others? How many will go to church this weekend? Is it going to be automatic for them? When will they last pray, seriously <coughs> and sincerely? Is it automatic for them? There are some, even this weekend, who will end up precisely unprepared, in an accident, coming from not church at all, for precisely a dirty, dirty use of time. I think you know the kind of thing I mean over the weekend. The discourse of inner city Dublin aren't exactly what we're celebrating here. Places where Old Nick is having a field day, as you young people know. So, is that automatic pilot? Do we automatically sail through the doors of paradise as though they come just from church? Well, I think we have to be careful by giving a false message. Therefore, this gospel is serious stuff. The Lord is warning us. Don't presume. So, what are the conclusions? Let's make sure that we never go to sleep without making peace with Almighty God. It's kind of important, but because sleep is like death. It turns our eyes, some people are going to wake up. And it's very important that we rest in peace in the arms of the Lord that made us. Making a sincere examination of conscience 
of which then one makes eventually a confession. Go to a confession regularly so that your insurance policy is fully paid out.